Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. I hope you'll enjoy this uh, Wednesday Whip and the Whip colouring chat and I hope you'll come back or even subscribe, which would be amazing. And if you've been here for thank you for coming back. It's lovely to see you again. Um, I do appreciate each and every one of you and uh, let's get started. So I have got a few whips. I hate having whips. I'm only about 13 or 14. It's not a huge amount. I have seen people who have got over 80. That would drive me absolutely up the wall. Um, so I'm going to try and work through the whips with you guys. We'll save the Christmas ones and do them at Christmas, okay? And you picked Rooms of Wonder. So we had votes for Rooms of Wonder, Alan Robert, Three, and the Kirby book. So we will do them all. But let's start with Rooms of Wonder. So let me find the page. Oh, I had it a minute ago, I was looking at it. <laughs> I'm not very good at this, am I? Should be a bit more prepared. There we go, it's just life, isn't it? There we go, there, see it somewhere. It's disappeared, somebody's ripped it out, haven't they? It really has, it's disappeared. There it is. We were doing this page, I was doing this page. Okay. Let me just put my phone on there to wait down the other side. <laughs> And I am using uh, these pencils, which were from B&M, and they are Deco Time. They don't have numbers on them. Oh, they have numbers on them. They have colour colours on them. So, but I know this was the one I left out because I was doing this edge piece, which I'm going to continue doing while I talk to you. Let's zoom it in. So as you can see, I've done a little bit, not a huge amount, but um, I thought we'd do a little bit of this. So. It's going to be interesting because uh, I'm left-handed and it's on the wrong side. I need to get a better setup, really. Anyway, I hope you're all really well. I'm not too bad. I'm all right myself. I'm just very, very tired. Um, so about three weeks ago, coming up to four weeks, on Saturday, my mum fell in the night and um, it was a Saturday morning. I was trying to get hold of her because we I was supposed to be going to the food festival in Risca. I never made it, obviously, but that's OK. I'm not bothered about that. Apparently it was very expensive because Paul took Jennifer. And so I drove over to find her lying up against one of the living room doors. Fortunately, her living room has two doors to get in. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to get in because um, the back door's locked from the inside. And uh, but luckily there are two doors, so I went round through into the uh, dining room and in through the kitchen, and she was lying on the floor. She'd been there a long time. She didn't have a phone on her or anything, and she couldn't get up. She'd been there since four o'clock in the morning. I called an ambulance because she couldn't 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 pull herself up. Couldn't stand when we got her standing. She couldn't put any weight on her leg. Probably shouldn't have tried to get her up, but she insisted. Got her up. Um, phone the ambulance. They, they eventually came after about four hours, which isn't too bad in the UK. Four hours isn't bad. Um, I think the first time she went to the hospital, they waited a lot longer. And uh, they said, well, we think she's broken her hip. So she had, in fact, broken her hip. So they took her in. I went home because of... Jennifer and to sort out stuff uh, for her. I packed her some stuff very quickly for her to, you know, take with her. But um, it was very little I could do. So they took her to the Grange. Next day, um, it was Sunday, so she phoned me, so yeah, I've got to have an operation tomorrow. I went, all oh, right. So I thought, I won't come in tomorrow, I'll ring, but I'll come in on Tuesday. However, when this happened, my car decided to break down. We had the instance of the exploding oil cap, which I'll go into in a bit after I've told you about Mum. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I went to, um, on Tuesday, I, I booked a taxi, which didn't come. And I was waiting, so somebody had accepted it, we booked book it through and out, and it didn't come, so uh, I cancelled it. And the reason I cancelled it is one of my neighbours, Kim, lovely lady, thank you Kim, said, 
I'll take you over to the Grange. I said, oh, you don't have to do that. It's a long way out and it's out your day. And she went, I don't mind. It's fine. I need to know the way because I ever have to go there. I <laughs> hope you don't, Kim. I hope you don't. So Kim drove me over and she said, I'll wait for you here in the coffee shop. I said, you don't have to wait. She said, no, no, it's fine. So she waited for me in the coffee shop and I went and found mum. It wasn't very far. She was on the ground floor as well, which was easy. And she's sitting there in a bay and she's just quite happy. You know, she's just lying there. She's not happy because it was happy in hospital. Um, I'd packed her some books. So she had some reading stuff, which was great. She wouldn't have read anything the day of the operation. So she had her operation. Everything went fine. They did ring me when she came out and everything like that. Um, and while I was there, one of the orthopedic people, nurses, doctors, whatever, come around to say, right, we're going to move you to a hospital near your home because uh, these are acute beds. Obviously, she's no longer acute because she's been operated on. She's now into a recovery. Um, so they moved her to the Gwent, which was fine. The Gwent's, it's an okay hospital. She's quite happy. Well, she'd rather be at home, obviously. Who wouldn't? But she, um, she's over there now. And I've been over a few times to see her, but it's killing me because... I had a big issue with my car. All the sensors were going off and I didn't know why. Um, so, and and it, it was raining and I could see, every time I parked up the car, I could see a sheen of oil on the, on the floor. And I thought, I must have an oil leak. So I called my mechanic, Carl, and he said he'd come and have a look and he took a bit longer than he normally would because he's so busy. You know, and he's got a family, he's got a life to lead himself. So, I'm, you know, I'm not mad. I, I don't get mad at him if he can't make it. It's just one of those things. And he, um, he came um, and he looked at it and he, he said, has anybody been in here? After I opened up the lid, uh, the boot, the bonnet rather. And I said, no, not oh, only me yesterday when I noticed there was no actual oil in the oil tank because I used the dipstick. And he said, well, I know what your issue is. You call it oil caps missing. I never noticed. I'm not very good with cars. I'm like, what? He said, your oil cap's missing. So basically every time it hit it up, it would just splosh out the top. There was, that's why I opened the bonnet and it was dripping oil. <laughs> And I was like, oh, okay, that's a bit different. He says, don't worry, I'll order you an oil cap. When it comes, I'll come and put the oil in, put the cap on, I'll take the car away, I'll clean the engine, unless they steam it or something, to get the oil off, otherwise you think you've got a leak all the time. And then, it'll be fine. And then we'll do the MOT. You know, because he was going away, so we had to do the MOT. That's another story. Anyway, so that was the whole explo exploding oil cap. Somehow it popped off. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where. I don't know when. But I know no. So that was fixed. That was great. So I went to Mum at the Gwent on the Sunday because in a week I'll catch the bus. It's not very far on the bus. It's a short bus trip. I go in pretty much every other day. But there's never anywhere to park in the car park because in the UK, in most hospital car parks, you have to pay. So. But that's in England. If I was in England and she was in England in hospital, I'd have to pay for parking. And you'd still have trouble finding the space, which is true. In Wales, parking in hospital car parks is free. But in the week, everybody parks there and walks into town because it's free parking and nobody wants to pay for parking in Newport. It doesn't actually bother me. I will quite happily pay for parking in Newport because I'm not a stingy cow. So I'll catch a bus. But anyway, on a Sunday, even though the shops are open, there's tons of spaces, literally loads of spaces, so I just drive down. So, so then he came and took it for the MOT, it failed, there was a few things that need doing. He said, right, I'm going away soon, let's get this done. And I said to there was a few necessaries, and then there's a few what they call advisories, things that need to be done, but not immediately. So basically this is anything to do with the safety of the vehicle, so things like seat belts, uh, brakes, my brakes were fine you know things like that so so I, I messaged him and I said to him just just do the stuff to get it through the advisory have your break and then we will look at the rest of it and he can do this in bits so it's not going to be like a huge bill in one go because some some things he's got to get parts for um for instance I, I got a broken wing mirror I can still use it but it needs replacing I can because I've been using it today um so He'll find me a replacement and he'll try and get one from eBay or somewhere like that. But he'll keep looking. Pins for the light um, that sits over the number plate needs fixing. So he will then do that when he gets back. But the tyres are the most important thing. So the tire, three of the tyres need replacing. So when he gets back, he'll get three tyres, take the car, put them on, bring it back. 
and I will give him some lovely cash. My lovely mother, she says, because she knows she's going to need the car to take her to appointment. She says, if you need any money for the car, take it out of the bank. In fact, that's her, her attitude for everything. If you need any money, take it out of the bank. I thought, if I took money out of the bank every time she told me to, she'd have no money left. I obviously don't. <laughs> I check on her bank out, I've got access to it, you know, and I do keep an eye on it. But generally, I just, just make sure what's going out is right. That there's no weird things happening, that money's coming in like a state pension and stuff like that and that's all good and it is all good so yeah she's she's recovered she's terrified of falling again when the, when I was there the first time I went into the Gwent physio came around to have a look this was on a Friday and she did the stuff she didn't want to she was moaning about it I said come on mum the sooner you get this done and the sooner you get physical and mobile the sooner you can come home but if you fight them you're gonna be here for a long time and they want you gone, they want this bed, winter's coming. So she did it and they said, her, for, considering she only had her operation on, on Monday, her mobility in her broken hip and leg, well, not the leg was broken, but the hip was broken, was really good. But she is very weak, she can't, she's not very strong at all now. So she can't actually push herself up. So they said to build her up. Um, they said to bring her in anything she likes to eat. I said, well, can she have something like nut brittle? Because obviously I'm aware of allergies. And I said, oh, yeah, you can bring in nuts. We're not, we're not, um, she did say a particular word about it. And she said, um, bring it in. We don't do, we don't ban nuts on the ward unless obviously there's somebody on the ward that's got an allergy. So I went, great, took it in. It's in a bag. And she can snack on it to her heart's content. I took her some chocolate finger biscuits, some, uh, what are they called, some malted milk biscuits basically lots of snacky things the other day I bought a bacon sandwich in the coffee shop and she had that and it's fine but they want her to eat because she needs to build up the strength in her arms she was so weak and her and her hemoglobin was really low at one point that they gave her a, a litre of blood to, to push it back up because they were worried about how low her her, her hemoglobin level was right I'll go back over that off camera right very nice. I just got to get some, I think I'll get the, some of the greens out. Oh, I would put, I've got so much stuff on this desk. I need a bigger desk. Oh, there's a picture of Marilyn. <laughs> 1962 in Mexico. There we go. Tray greens. Keeping that one blue out because I want to use it again. Do, 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 do. Let's use this one. Oh, sorry, empty cans, everyone, I'll take them. Just terrible, I'm terrible. Sharpener. So basically that's the nonsense that's been going on in the house of Andrea. Jennifer's fine. She's good. She's, uh Doing well. She's at school, obviously. It's school day today. It'll be on Wednesday. Yeah, so she's actually fine. She's quite, she's doing really well. We're practicing her reading a lot. I get her to read to me most nights, so tonight she'll read, and we are reading, what are we reading? We're reading Horrid Henry um, and Sweet Treats, and they're trying to collect the golden gizmo, and she's doing really well, so just before we go to bed, we get out her book, she reads a page, just to encourage her, just to learn some bigger words, she's doing well, she's getting there. She likes maths and English. Tomorrow's lovely. I get a longer day in a way. I miss her, but she's she's doing some an extracurricular at school. I miss a bit of um, blue sky, so that's a good job I kept that blue pencil out. Um, she's doing something called Disney Club. And this is just when they're going to watch the films, uh, draw pictures, sing the songs, dance to the songs, and basically just have a nice afternoon. It's only for 50 minutes. It starts at 10 past three when they leave, or around that time. And it ends at around four-ish. And uh, she's really looking forward. She was so excited when she got in, because they only had 15 places. They weren't planning on doing it next term. They've decided now two, which is good for the ones that missed out. Obviously, they must have had a lot of interest. So I'm glad about that, because she stopped going to Taekwondo for a bit, because she's bored of it. 
and I've always said I'm never gonna, I'm not gonna force her to do things if she wants to do something she can try it and then if she doesn't like it or she wants to stop for whatever reason she can and then if she wants to go back in six months time she can do that as well I'm not gonna stop her I missed a bit of that as well I have to find that one out oh dear this has been sitting around for so long I forgot so as you can see this is going to take a while to do because we are using the deco time pencils but it's nice I like it I like this picture so we are into October, I've got lots of Halloween pictures to do. I'll try and do a cut and chat with Halloween, but uh, yeah. So I think part of the reason Mum didn't do a lot, because she doesn't do a lot at home. If she can get away with not doing anything, she'll not do it. Is I think she pretty much gave up after Dad died for a bit. And now she's realising she can't carry on like that. And she actually admitted she wanted to die when he died. That, I've done that bit as well. I'm an idiot. Where's my eraser? Something just fell off. Oh, I've got a bit of a sinus headache. I always get these in the winter. And it's um, very painful. I'm sure some of you know. <laughs> it's not a very bad one today, but uh, it is hitting. I like the bottles on the next page as well, so. Oh, I I've got to stop buying colouring books. I don't buy as many as I was. I've got no space for them. Other than the new little ones that Coco, Wyo, Jade Summer, etc. They're all putting out these tiny ones, aren't they? These little um, square books. They actually fit on my uh, spare shelf that I've got. Oh, I'm going to have to find my really good eraser because that's not coming off very well. Oh, it's coming off though. I don't know where my electric's gone. I'll, find, I'll have to find it. Anyway, excuse me, I did not mean to sniff like that on camera. My apologies for being so disgusting. Again, that's part of the, the sinus headache. So yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm doing all right. Obviously I miss my dad a hell of a lot and some days are harder than others. And uh, yeah, I miss him. I do miss him, I miss his company. We used to have such fun together. But you know, he was 83 and he went peacefully without any suffering and to me that that makes it bearable because the one thing he never wanted to do was to suffer he always dreaded being reliant on people to look after him and take care of his hygiene needs that would have he would have hated that so obviously mum does the bathroom on her own at the moment so she's all right and she's going to the bathroom at the hospital with help from the nurse she'll she can walk with a frame but she is scared or she can go on the steady which is like a little chair but she's scared of falling which is totally totally understandable uh, um she's had a few falls this is the worst i mean the last one she bit her lip open that wasn't very nice obviously and uh, the first one but this time she's broken them so they want to give her an infusion of stuff to strengthen her bones and the reason for that is they say you you, you don't like going to the out point which, and she doesn't she never wants to go and I have a, I, and I can't fight with her I haven't got the energy because I am so busy dealing with Jennifer and everything else at both houses except for the garden because we have a garden to come to mum's to keep it nice and uh, so what, they say, what we'll do is we'll put a drip in for 15 minutes with this stuff in it and it'll help strengthen your bones and that will last for a year and you won't have to go to any out point your patient's appointments about bones because she has broken a few bones obviously and she's at risk of breaking more naturally because of her age you know she is 80 oops sorry so she said yep that's fine so she's going to have that before she, before that be about a week before they release her so she hasn't had that yet there's a bit more blue i can see a bit more blue needs doing but i'll, I'll worry about that in a minute so she's, I mean, I haven't eat, seen her eat so much in a long time, to be fair, when I was there um, the one day she was having her lunch and it was cottage pie uh, with uh, vegetables, um, extra mashed potato, because you have it on the top, but loads of mashed potatoes. They, they like serving mashed potato at the hospital. And uh, yeah, so she's been having, and I haven't seen her eat so much. She, just, she was shoveling it in like, like somebody was going to steal it from her. Which is good. And then she had ice cream. She loves the ice cream at the hospital. I can't remember what brand it is, but I will have a look next time I'm there, which will be tomorrow. 
So yeah, tomorrow I'll be going in to see her. Take her some clean pyjamas. She's got some there. I've just made sure all her pyjama sets are there. But I'll take in the ones I've washed. I bring home the dirty ones. Sit with her for an hour. Don't have to rush home because Jennifer's in her uh, Disney club, which would be nice. Oh, my head hurts. Probably shouldn't be drinking Diet Coke. Go over here. You know, we've been doing this for 19 minutes and we've only done a tiny little bit. Right, where am I? Let's do that. Okay, here we are over here. Yeah, there's a bit of sky mist in here as well. I'll finish that off camera later. So I'll do some of this. It's nice to actually do a bit of this again. I, I, I've missed this. I like this book. But when you get so many books, you tend to stick to the same few um, rather than mix it. Especially as I've got a few that I'm trying to get close to finishing. You know, the, we're doing the whole 10 to finish or 5 to work, 5 to finish thing. It didn't work very well with one of the books. I did one picture in them and I've given up. So I'm not going to use that one next year. I'm deciding which ones to use in 2020, 2025. Of course. I'm getting old. So we do we do have some more um oh gosh what are they call those daily vlogs planned. Um obviously without the car we haven't been able to go anyway. <laughs> but now we've got it back. I think we're going out this weekend to um some place that I can't pronounce the name of because it's very Welsh and full of L's, C's and N's. And there's an F in there as well. It's something like Lanfach Fair Manor or something. It's really nice. There's a Living History Museum. But the sad thing is the Caffili Council are closing it at the um, at Christmas because they're saying they can't afford to run it due to government, due to budget cuts. So there were three things that they were looking at doing away with. Uh, that's one of them. That one's definitely going ahead, sadly. Which I think it's a shame because it is a beautiful place. Maybe Cadow can take it over or something, I don't know. Put it under the museum's banner. Or, I don't know. Um, the other thing was Meals on Wheels for the Elderly and Firm, which is to me a necessity. It's not, a, you know, and it's not that it's a free service. It's subsidised, but it's not free. The people receiving the Meals on Wheels have to pay for them. You know, so it's not a completely free service. So it's not like they're cancelling something where they're going to save a whole amount. It's only going to be a part amount because the people pay for it. And I know this because they were they were offered to mums and I was like, well, she's a bit of a fussy eater, to be honest. She probably wouldn't eat half of it. So I don't know if they get a choice. I'm assuming they must get some sort of choice. Um, that's something I might have to look into, to be fair. And the other thing was they were going to close up um, what they term as mothball because it's not a permanent closure. Well, they looked into other alternatives. Blackwood Miners Institute. Uh, Blackwood Miners Institute um, has been there obviously a long time. Um, since 1991, two, I think I want to say, it's been a arts venue. So it used to be, I, when I first opened, it was obviously rehearsal rooms for the plays dressing rooms obviously for the plays there was a massive bar there was an upstairs there's an upstairs bar that, that's all the same um they used to have a little shop where they sold sweets and things they've now removed that and put an elevator in its place or a lift and there was uh they used to show films i think they still do uh, films plays concerts and stuff and there was a massive outcry about closing that place absolutely massive to the point that people marched and it was a lot of people marched in protest at the closure of the institute so that one's been put on a back burner now while they investigate how they can afford to keep it going because again it's not something they pay for 100 percent. it's subsidized if you go there you pay for tickets it's not like you get to get in for free and i know a lot of people i've used it i was one of the first staff members there i worked um I should. And, and we were volunteers. There were paid staff, but the ushers were volunteers. We weren't paid. Our pay was getting to see the plays and the films for free. That was it. Um, bar staff paid. Even when you were doing the shop for the cinema, that was volunteer. 
So, I, I mean, I don't know now about the ashes, whether they're still volunteered. I would imagine they're still volunteered. Um, so, but yeah, there was such a big outcry and they got the support of people like the Mannix, whoever street preachers who are from the area and have a relationship um, and a history with the stoot, as we call it, that they've actually had to cancel those plans while they look at what they could do instead to fund it, which is great. I mean, I feel sorry for Lanf <laughs> Manor because it's an educational resource and that's a shame that they shut in an educational resource that, you know, that would be very good. I know I'm only doing the boring bits, aren't I? In the next one, I promise we will do bottles and maybe the, the, the jars down here. I can't maybe because the thing's in the way. But I just wanted to get some of this background done. So I hope you don't mind me waffling on while I colour in blues and greens. It's all got to be done. Any overs I'll do over, you know, anything I go over, I'll do that separately. But it's nice to get this book out and have another go at it. And of course I pick the hardest, one of the hardest pictures in there to do first. Because that's me. Actually, I tend to pick a picture I like the best. So this is one of my favourites. Uh, you can't really see that. So let's do something else. Um, let's pick a different green. And do... We'll use that one there. Don't worry. It is such a nice book, this. Oh, I'm wondering, is that? Oh. Definitely won't go in that one, school. I'm going to, I think my sharpener's full of shavings. It's only a tiny little sharpener. <laughs> Bought from Lidl's. My dull one's around somewhere. My windy dull one. And my electric one is downstairs because I use it downstairs. One day I'm going to have a dedicated colouring space. I swear I am, I am, I am. Basically I colour anywhere I can. I colour on the big table, I colour on the desk in this room, which was my office. And I colour in bed and on the sofa. <laughs> I don't colour in the bath, obviously, because it'd get wet. I have coloured in the pub before now. I've taken it with Jen when we've gone up because she gets bored. And I don't want her watching TV all the bleeding time. Excuse my language. I don't want her watching television all the time because it's not good for you. So sometimes I say, come on, take a book and we'll take some, a small pack of pens and we'll go and do some colouring at the pub when we're up there. And I take like a colour by number book or a simple picture. And a pack of 20 markers or something. I don't know. Not the big sets. That's nice. Here we are. All going. That oh, one might drink. So. Camera's going to turn off. So basically that's what's been going on. It's been a bit of a nightmare really. What with the, the car issues and mum. And I'm on my own. Well, obviously I've got Paul, but I mean, my brothers are in New Zealand. They're a lot of, they're about as much help as a fish on a bicycle. So, then they can give me all their concern, but they're not here, the one, they're not the ones here dealing with everything. So, I don't really, <clears throat> I get a bit annoyed with them, to be fair. I'm not going to lie. It's alright, say, oh, you should do this, this, and this. And I'm like, when am I supposed to do this when I'm looking after Jennifer and my house and Paul and Mum and me? I don't go looking anymore. It's like I'm I'm the least important person, and yet I'm the most important person because I'm the one that's doing all the stuff. So, yeah, this is me taking some time for myself before I go and get Jennifer from school, which is like right, another hour before I have to do that. Yay! This is going to switch off in a minute because it's nearly at 30 minutes. Do you think 30 minutes is long enough or should we do longer? I'm going to carry on colouring it off camera for a bit. I'm going to um, finish this bit that I'm going round, I think. Um, but we will call it a day. So you can see what I've done. 
not much. We finished off most of the blue, though I've got to go over it, and we've also done a bit of green. Um, next week, next Wednesday, we're going to tackle this bit. It stopped. We're going to tackle this counter down here and do as much of this as we can, and potentially the rug. So next week, everything on this counter, we're going to do. Oh, and the rings on the planet thing, yeah. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed this. I know it's sort of a bit of a hodgepodge here because I haven't, I've only done a bit of the background. But next week we will start on, on this piece and uh, we'll see what we can do. Hope you've enjoyed this. It's nice to be back talking to somebody. It's always good to talk to somebody, even if they're, you're not actually with them in the room. Just to talk to, to you guys is really helpful. So thank you for listening. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, short colour and chat. And I will see you in the next one, hopefully very, very soon. Bye, guys.